Welcome to episode three of Wild Homestead. Big news, my Irish wolfhound puppy is already five weeks old. He is the fellow in the picture on the right. I have decided on the name Clovis, one of my favorite characters from Roman history. He will be ready for pickup in mid-January, but obviously I must have my roof up and my cabin heated to take in my first ever dog child. This week was full of wild swings in temperature, rain to fog to heavy snow. At the end of episode two, I was completely snowed in and my camp was a mess. My build site was covered in snow and my logs were all frozen to the ground. Episode three is all about rebuilding my base camp and building the first level of my cabin walls. Friends, Romans, countrymen, let's roll into episode three. So this is 100 feet right to here, and we're maybe six feet away from that tree, five feet. So it's about 105 feet.
Thanks for the suggestions, internet. Love you guys. Love all my subscribers and my viewers out there. You're really helping me out, guys. I appreciate all your comments and your encouragement. It keeps me going, baby. Woo! Berries and cherries. <laughs> what do they say? Every task, just take it one cherry at a time, right? Too much slack. Oh my God. Look how much this tent has collapsed under the snow. That's the edge of the tent. <laughs> That's the edge of the tent. It's completely flat and then it starts to go up right about here. Oh my God. This is our ridge line. Uh, oh, look at that setting sun, baby. <laughs> so romantic. There's so many romantic, beautiful scenes out here every day. I could just be a, become a full, full time haiku romance poet, but uh, I think I won't. Um, so the ridge line, it's, a, it's pretty damn taut. My first plan was to do a trucker's hitch over there and try to cinch it in. I couldn't get nearly tight enough with my own mechanical, you know, leverage. Trucker's hitch, plan A, failed. Plan B, hook it up to a come-along winch and try to winch it tight. It's pretty tight. 
But the problem is, is that this nylon rope, I had no idea, is so bendy. Look at this. I can almost get it right down to the ground. <sighs> you know, I think it could be good enough. I've got a huge 30 foot long by 20 foot wide uh, tarp. It could be good enough, you know, to keep snow off, off the site until, you know, I start building. But you know what? When the Romans were building Rome, they didn't say it's good enough. You're choosing the woman who will become your wife. You don't just say, this one's good enough. You do the best that you damn can, and this is not the best that I can do. So we're going to plan C, baby, and we're going to have a beautiful, beautiful ridge line that would make the Romans proud. Oh yeah. Look, at that. Look how taut that is. Holy Lord. And there's even, there's room to go in the come along. Okay, this, this tarp is freaking huge. Okay, I'm going to peg it down. And then we'll see what it looks like in the morning. Interesting. So the four, the true, the two trucker hitches held up. This ground peg did not, but that ground peg did. Still not bad for something I put together in the dark. And look how high the ridge line still is. That's perfect. I love Rome, Roman history. I love that Romulus and Remus were, were raised by a wolf, a mother she-wolf, you know, raised on her milk, wolf's milk. I love that, that whole story. So I call this, this is my wolf's milk. Um, this uh, property, the first night I slept out on it, there were wolves howling up the river, which was, it's the first time I'd ever heard a wolf pack. They weren't dogs, they weren't coyotes, they were wolves. The maple syrup that I was using, um, it's produced by a fellow who I met up here and uh, his kind of maple uh, tree forest is on a mountain called Wolf Mountain. So I'm like, you're t wait a minute. I'm like, your maple syrup is harvested from a place called Wolf Mountain. He's like, yes. I'm like, dude, you got, I got to buy some of your maple syrup. So um, I, I, I'm drinking about, you know, 20% Wolf Mountain maple syrup, 80% coffee. And, uh, you know, before coming up here, I'd go on and off coffee, maybe max, you know, one cup a day. And now I'm drinking like three to four cups. So 
this wolf milk is uh it's it's getting me through this man and this builds build site this is the site of uh where i'm gonna build the main house after my first cabin is up so this view is just stunning of the river and the, the ridge line I, I love it it uh the thought of being in a home here with my wife and kids and irish wolfhound it uh it makes all the struggle 100 percent worth it I'm gonna create cross beams on the ground, get the logs up on top of them. I can't, I'm not gonna use coniferous trees. There's just too many branches to delimb. I'm gonna look for a poplar, a poplar tree, which is a deciduous tree. They generally have fewer branches. So a smaller poplar that I can lay on the ground and get these things up off the snow so they don't get frozen to the ground. Bingo. Hello, Thor's Oak survives another day. Keeping hot on the stove, which is roaring. 
And then we got a little, little wolf's milk. Little wolf's milk coming up here for us this morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is a draw knife. I am going to peel two of the biggest logs I have, the 18 footers that are gonna be going on my 16 foot sides, just to see how they peel and uh, how much time each log is gonna take. And I think I might try to assemble the first four logs at the base um, and see how it goes. So eventually, for these two test logs, I'm gonna peel them where they lay, but eventually I'm gonna build a log peeling station right in between these logs and the build site on two kind of like saw horses so that I can get the logs up high and it's very easy to peel uh, and it's gonna make it faster and easier on my back. We had huge winds last night and uh, the tarp did not survive. This one got kind of half blown off.
<laughs> Rome was not built in a day. Can shoot a swan countdown. <laughs> good neighbor, very good neighbor. I went into Home Depot and I asked, sir, I'm looking for assless chaps. And he said, sir, we don't sell those here. I said, what about assless chaps for chainsawing? He said, oh yes, we do have those.
So uh, the tarp over the ridge line, which I don't know if you can see it, has actually been doing very well, except when there's snow and high wind, high wind and high snow, it's getting torn off. It's almost like the snow gets stuck to the tarp and then it's even heavier. And then when the wind hits it, the load is just too much. The ridge line is fine, but the stakes on the sides of the tents are literally getting ripped out of the ground. So I might need to get a bigger tarp that um, comes right down to the ground. So there's no ability for the, the wind to really get underneath it and peel it off. Um, or I'm just gonna have to keep on, you know, pegging it right to the ground. Cause like this, you know, it's more annoying. I gotta do work shoveling snow off, but at least it works. These are the biggest logs. I didn't even mean to harvest logs this big. These guys are 10 inches. It's extremely difficult for me to move them by myself. Uh, 10 inch diameter. Um, the rest of my logs are nine, eight, and seven. So I'm gonna try to get nine inches on top of this guy, on these guys. Um, but I've also got two 10 inch diameters to go at the, uh, the width sections there. So I'm gonna get those put up. As you can see over here on this one, that guy, has a bow slightly outwards, and uh, there's a gap between it and the the uh, middle uh, pier pad there. Now, if I had the luxury of this being the summer, and I can go hunt through the uh, uh, forest and find another 10 incher to put there that's straighter, um, I would do that. But in this case, you know what? I don't mind that at all. I think I might put a few pieces, uh, little shimmies in there um, to make it have contact with the middle pier. And as well, I may even take my chainsaw and kind of shave off that bow on top so it's straighter. And you know, chinking is a beautiful thing, filling in the gaps. Um, so I like it, man. These are two big 10 inchers. And both of these guys came from down that hill. It was a son of a gun getting these things up that hill. So uh, I'm proud of them and I'm sticking with them. 12 feet. This needs to go a little bit wider. Twelve feet right on the dot, second try. Six fourteen. Oh my god. <laughs> I shit you not. Six fourteen, six fourteen, perfectly square. First shot. What day is it today? Today is Wednesday. Voden's day. Praise Odin for the perfectly square first two logs. 12 feet separation, perfectly square. Praise Odin.
ladies and gentlemen, so we got the first layer uh, on the ground here and nothing is tying these guys together um, except for these giant screws. I'm gonna tap in uh, these 12 inch screws, just one on each corner to tie the bottom layer together. In this button pass method, um, the bottom layer is generally not gonna have anything securing it together uh, until you get the layer on top um, spiked down into it. So I'll be showing you that starting uh, in my next episode where I'm putting the, uh, the further layers of the wall up. SPQR, Senatus Publius K. Romanus, the Senate and people of Rome. My big inspiration for this build is, you know, Romulus and Remus, the two brothers raised by a mother she-wolf, uh, raised in the wild like this wild homestead, but they go on to build, you know, the foundation of the Roman Empire. And uh, that's my, those are my spirit animals, man, Romulus and Remus. So this is gonna give me strength while I continue to build, it's right over the build site. And you know, my favorite movie, bar none, uh, was Gladiator. So uh, when I look at this, I think of Gladiator, I think of General Maximus, and uh, it gives me inspiration. My name is James Decimus Alofs, commander of the armies of the North, general of the Felix Legions, loyal servant to the true emperor, Marcus Aurelius. Future father to ten sons, future husband to Sophie Turner, Queen of the North. I will build this wild homestead, whether it's in this life or the next.